No, this isn't a joke. It's real. About as real as you can get. Real enough for screaming nightmares about the things you've seen and done. Because sometimes the stuff you see in the movies, the stuff you thought could never, ever happen to you, well, it can happen. It does happen. I've seen it. Oh, please tell me that the movie in which the things actually do happen is the Muppet movie. Oh, with the banjo playing frog and the bear stand-up comedian and a pig winning a county fair beauty contest and, and Steve Martin being a shitty waiter and I could hang out with Dr. Teeth. And oh my God, that'd be awesome. Welcome, everyone, to Alternate Reality Autumn! Bum, 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 bum. The next three reviews feature Animorph stories that take place outside of the normal Animorph universe, either through messing with the space-time continuum, alien simulations of what-if scenarios, or, in this case, non-canon game books that rewrite canon books to feature your stupid butt. Yes, Alternomorphs, the Animorphs choose-your-own-adventure books. You thought I forgot about those, didn't you? You thought I was going to skip them entirely, didn't you? Well, here we are. I will admit, figuring out how I was going to talk about these two books was a challenge I had to solve very early in the life of the Opinionated Animorphs book guide. Considering how little content there actually is in these books, how unimportant they are to Animorphs as a whole, and how complicated it would be to talk about a choose-your-own-adventure book twice... The first decision I made was to review both books together so I wouldn't be repeating myself over and over again. Then I had to choose when in the project to review them. I try to review everything in publication order. Alternomorphs number 1 The First Journey was published in March of 1999, which would have put its review between number 28 The Experiment and number 29 The Sickness. And I figured it'd be better for the heart if I followed the shitty meat is murder but not really book with one that wasn't actually shit. Then I realized if I did this when Alternomorphs number two, the next passage was published, March of 2000, then I could do a alternate reality theme season. Patience is rewarded with gimmicks. So with those big decisions out of the way, the next decision was how do I even review these things? I've never reviewed a choose-your-own-adventure book before. Every time the Goosebumps Halloween Annual comes around, I always make sure to leave a no-give-yourself-goosebumps books as a ground rule. So this is a clearly new territory for me. Let me first say that neither of these books will be getting the traditional number score. They're so out of the normal wheelhouse for this review series that I wouldn't know what to score them anyway. I can only address their quality in relation to each other in other game books. So let me just say up front that neither of these are required reading for Animorphs. You are not missing anything in skipping them, and not just because they are the only books in the series that are non-canon. Like a lot of the Animorphs merchandise and spin-off material, they're both just kinda lame, but in remarkably different ways. But taking away the number score doesn't get us any closer to actually talking about these things. I spent months racking my brain for ways to approach this project. And to tell you the truth, I'm stumped. There's a couple of ways I could do this, but I don't know which is the right way. Which way will do the subject matter justice? So, with the gimmick you probably saw coming a mile away, I mean, come on, look at how short this video is, I'm going to have you help me form this review. The first thing we could do is just get on with it and jump into the plot of the first Alternomorphs book. If you come here for the sarcasm and nitpicking, click option A. Oh, make sure you have annotations on. The next possibility is that I could take a look at the big picture by looking at the history of choose-your-own-adventure books and the various literary advantages and disadvantages of the format. If you watch my videos for the pretentious histrionics and research, click option B. But you know what? 
We both know these books are non-canon. We both know they suck. We both know they are entirely disposable. Maybe we should just forget this and talk about something way more interesting, like, uh, oh, I don't know, early 20th century revolutionary theory filtered through geographical awareness as defined by French Marxist Guy Debord. If you want to learn a bit about psychogeography, click option C. Option D was going to be a dance party, but Andrew W.K. isn't returning my call, so sorry, guys. A, B, or C. You must choose. I cannot go forward without you.